What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of the Updated Bracketology. It is March 10th, and Champ Week is still rolling on, and we are getting ever so closely to Selection Sunday, just days away from the big event, and March Madness is starting to heat up. So let's get right into the Updated Bracketology. This was just a minutes ago, uh, 10.30 a.m., and it's 10.51 uh, my time. So just 20 minutes after this, so we have lots of games uh, underway, starting with the noon games and all the way up to the Pac-12 late after dark games. So the bracket watch kind of remains the same as a couple of days ago, uh, but we don't see Nevada on this list. We now see Arizona State. The top overall seed is the Kansas Jayhawks. Uh, they got a big win against West Virginia in the Big 12 tournament uh, yesterday. The first team out is Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State is still on the bubble. They did get a big win against Oklahoma, uh, but ended up falling uh, yesterday to Texas. And then the last team in is Arizona State. They got a big, big win against USC. USC is in the field. They're a nine seed in this latest bracketology. So they are the last team in. And now let's go on now to on the bubble. Your last four buys are Boise State. Boise State got a win against UNLV in overtime last night. Providence now moves to the last four buys. Now, Providence, last time that we looked at this, that they were safely in the field. And now, with their recent loss, now that they're in the field of the last four buys, Penn State is one of the other teams in the last four buys with a huge win yesterday against Illinois. They'll play Northwestern today. Mississippi State getting an overtime win over Florida yesterday. And they'll have a big chance today by facing number one seed Alabama SEC championship. That will be getting underway here in a couple of minutes. Now moving on into the last four teams, Rutgers gets a huge win over Michigan, like I mentioned uh, a couple of days ago. Rutgers and Michigan, those were two teams vying for a spot in the tournament, so that was pretty much a play-in game, and the Scarlet Knights ended up beating Michigan. Uh, Pittsburgh they are still in the last four, and really nothing else uh, that Pittsburgh can do. They got knocked out a couple of days ago in the ACC tournament. Utah State remains the same as the last four in. And then Arizona State, like we mentioned with their big win USC last night, uh, they go from one of the first four out teams to the last four in. So we will see if the Sun Devils can their winning ways in the Pac-12 tournament. And the first four out, like we mentioned, Oklahoma State, like uh, Pittsburgh, can't really do anything more to really add on to their resume. So I'd have to say that they are probably out unless one of their really competitors ahead of them uh, fall like Arizona State. But Oklahoma State can't really do anything. They have a win against Oklahoma and then a loss against Texas in the Big 12 championship. Clemson was probably the team yesterday that really made a marquee move. They moved from one of the next four teams out to the first four out with their huge win, 80 to 54 win over NC State. NC State is safely in the field as of now. Nevada moves from the last four in, actually to the last team in, to the first four out. And Wisconsin likely out of the tournament with their recent loss to 13 seed Ohio State. Ohio State's one of those teams that are, are starting to play hot. They beat Wisconsin. And they also had a quality win yesterday as well. And then the next four out, North Carolina is pretty much out of the tournament. They did uh, pick up a victory. Their first victory, I believe, was against Boston College. And then they lost uh, to Virginia uh, yesterday, which pretty much wipes away the Tar Heels. So this is going to be the first time that we have seen in any of our history uh, that a number one preseason team is going to miss the NCAA tournament. That's definitely surprising, especially – with everybody was coming back for the Tar Heels. I mean, this was the team just a year ago that was in the Final Four and then the National Championship game. So definitely a head-scratching year for North Carolina. Oregon is the next four out as well. Vanderbilt is on this line. Uh, they were on it a couple of days ago. Now they're the back on it. Uh, they got a big win last night to open up SEC tournament against number 14 seed LSU. Not much of – Really a win that's going to vault them into the tournament, but they have a big chance today against three-seeded Kentucky. So if they get that win, I would have to believe that they would move from the next four out to the one of the first four out. So huge opportunity for Vanderbilt. And then Michigan likely out of the tournament. 
with a loss against Rutgers. Really nothing that the Wolverines uh, can do to build on the resume since their season is done. So you could say that North Carolina and Michigan season is already done. And it's definitely surprising of two teams that had a lot of returning talent coming back this year. So that is our on the bubble watch. Now we go on to our 68 team bracket. We'll see who moved up, who moved down, who is also new to the field as well. So you have Pittsburgh moving down to 11 seed. They're in the playing game with Rutgers. Arizona State is new to the field. They'll be in the playing game with Utah State. Texas A&M Corpus Christi moves down. From being a 16 seed, being safely in the tournament, they're going to be in the tournament. Uh, they're the Southland Conference champs, but that, now they're in the playing game against Howard. So now let's go on down region by region, starting off with the Midwest and our movement here in the bracket. USC moves up to a number nine seed, even with a loss last night against Arizona State. It was a five-point loss, 77-72 to 72 to Arizona State. And speaking of Arizona State, they move up, and they are a new team in the field. In the South, you see Iowa fall down to an eight after their recent loss to Ohio State. Really nothing else uh, in the South, no movement there. Just a couple of matchup changes that we'll get into whenever we get into our predictions. In the West, you see Grambling State move up to a 16. The SWAC tournament is still going on, but the favorite Alcorn State, so they're just going with the number two seed. Grambling State is in the field. Pittsburgh, like we mentioned, moves down to the 11 seed. Missouri moves up to a seven seed. They have a huge opportunity today against Tennessee. If they can get a win, you would have to assume that they would keep moving up and potentially go up to a six seed. Texas A&M Corpus Christi moves down to a 16. Arkansas moves up to an eight at their most recent victory over Auburn. Illinois moves down to a nine after their loss to Penn State. And then speaking of Penn State, they move up to 11 seed after their victory against the Fighting Illini. Auburn moves down to a 10 after a recent loss against Arkansas. And then Colgate, they are in the field. They moved down uh, to a 15. At some point, they were a 14 seed, but now they're a 15 seed as well. Uh, but they are going to be the Patriot League champs and be in the tournament once again. So we have the field of 68. Let's go ahead and now move on now to our predictions. We'll also uh, pull that out here. As we do here, we have an ex uh, Excel spreadsheet uh, that we'll pull up here. So let's go ahead and pull up the um, the predictions. So let's go ahead and start off uh, with the Midwest. So I noticed that in the last video uh, that we did here, I didn't really put the correct regions, uh, so I ultimately changed that. So we'll start off with the Midwest. We have the defending national champs, Kansas, face off against number 16 seed Northern Kentucky. This is pretty easy to me. Uh, congratulations to the Norse of Northern Kentucky. Uh, they weren't the favorites to win their conference, but ultimately they made the run, made a quote-unquote Cinderella run, uh, but Northern Kentucky, the Norse, is in the tournament once again, but ultimately they'll fall to Kansas. Eight-seed Florida Atlantic, nine-seed USC. And now Florida Atlantic has been a team that I haven't picked, but I do like this matchup uh, for the Owls. They definitely have the shooters to take down USC. Five-seed Miami, 12-seed Drake Drake took down Bradley in the MVC Conference uh, Championship. So Drake is safely in the field. Miami got a recent victory over Wake Forest. It was a 74-72 game. I have been liking Miami, but Drake, I have seen a lot of people have their eyes on, their, on this team just because of the veteran presence that they bring. But in this case, I'm going to go with Miami. Four seed Indiana, 13 seed Yale. I'm going to go with Indiana in this one, but Yale is always a sneaky team. They always play teams close in the first round. Six seed St. Mary's, 11 seed Utah State and Arizona State. I would have Arizona State winning that matchup and also pulling off the upset. I'm going to go with Arizona State and 11 over six seed here. And then now we have uh, three seed Tennessee, 14 seed Furman. I'm going to go with the Vols and going on. They got a big win last night against Ole Miss, and they'll have another opportunity to move up in their seeding with a victory over Missouri. 7C Northwestern, 10C Providence. I'm going to go with Northwestern in this matchup and then to finish off the Midwest here in the first round, 2 seed Arizona, 15 seed UNC Asheville. I'm going to go with Arizona in this one. So now we'll move on. We'll continue on with the Midwest. We had the round of 32 matchups set. Kansas, Florida Atlantic, I'm going to go with the Jayhawks moving on. Miami, Indiana, I'm going to still continue to go all chalk here, go with the Hoosiers of Indiana. 
they just been more consistent though. By Miami, pretty much lives and dies uh, by the three point. If they get hot, then they are a very tough team to beat. But I think that Indiana matches up very well, especially with the guard play. Arizona State versus Tennessee. This would be a tough matchup for the Vols, but I think that they could get the job done here. And Northwestern versus Arizona. Don't really see any upsets here. Arizona is one of the elite teams in college basketball. So I'll go with the Wildcats moving on. Sweet 16, you have Kansas and Indiana. This would be a potential upset for me, but I do like the Jayhawks uh, in this matchup. And then Tennessee, Arizona. I know that this is all chalk so far, uh, but I'm going to go with Arizona. And then Kansas, Arizona. This is a tough one for me, but I still got to go with the defending national champs. Uh, they've been re really looking good. I know that that one loss that they had that left a bad taste uh, in, in people's mouths was that 16 loss. 16-point loss to Texas on the road, but still, this is one of the elite teams in college basketball. So now we have the Midwest complete. Let's go on now down to the West bracket. Is it is one seed UCLA, 16 seed Grambling. I'll have UCLA moving on. Eight seed Maryland and nine seed Memphis. I'm going to go with a 9-8 upset here. Go with the Memphis Tigers. Five seed Iowa State, 12 seed Charleston. I feel like Iowa State has always been a scary pick, but I have. Uh, especially with their past victory over Baylor, was really impressed with them. Uh, Charleston has been – I know that they're 30-3. and three. They've been a little up and down as of late. Uh, but I think that Charleston could give them a matchup here, but Iowa State is too much talent, and I think that their defensive play uh, would really cause some chaos. Four-seed Xavier, 13-seed Utah Valley, still no upsets for me. I just don't really have any faith in this Utah Valley team to pull it off. Six-seed six uh, Creighton, 11-seed Rutgers in Pittsburgh. I'm going to go with Rutgers in the play-in matchup, but ultimately they'll fall to Creighton. Three-seed Gonzaga, 14-seed Louisiana. I'm going to go with Gonzaga, so still going all chalk here. And seven-seed Missouri, 10-seed uh, Boise State. I do like Boise State, but I got to give Missouri some love here. Might be showing some little SEC bias during this. Uh, Two-seed Texas, 15-seed Montana State. I'm going to go with the Longhorns of Texas uh, moving on. They've really been playing good basketball down the stretch. All right, now the round of 32, UCLA-Memphis. Man, this would ultimately be a tough one for me to pick, but I'm going to go with UCLA. Iowa State and Xavier. I'm going to go with the Cyclones of Iowa State, pulling off a little 5 over 4 matchup here. I think that they are starting to heat up at the right time. Creighton, Gonzaga, I'm going to go with Gonzaga this one in Missouri and Texas, a former Big 12 matchup we get here in the round of 32. Ultimately, I'm going to go with the Big 12 moving on. UCLA and Iowa State, I'm going to go with UCLA in matchup. And then Gonzaga in Texas. Man, these are two evenly matched teams, but I'm going to go with the three C Gonzaga. And then ultimately, I'm going to have the Gonzaga Bulldogs beating UCLA. Uh, we saw this matchup a couple of years ago. It was crazy. Gonzaga pulled off a late win. I know that UCLA is going to want some revenge, but in the end, I have three C Gonzaga moving on. So now let's move on now to the east. We'll go on now to the bottom right portion of the bracket. Number one, Houston versus uh, Texas A&M Corpus Christi and Howard. I think that Texas A&M Corpus Christi will win that, but Houston is ultimately going to move on. Eight seed Arkansas and Illinois. You would go have Arkansas in this matchup. Number five seed Duke, 12 seed Oral Roberts. Now, I do like Oral Roberts. I'll probably be picking them to pull off. But I just don't really like this matchup here against Duke. Four seed Kansas State, 13 seed uh, Toledo. Now, Kansas State just got blown out by TCU uh, last night. But I still like the potential of Kansas State. I know that I don't have any 13 or 12 seed uh, upsets here. But I just don't really see it here. I know that Toledo is also an experienced bunch uh, that can really uh, create some chaos here. Six seed Kentucky, 11 seed Penn State. Now, depending on what Kentucky does, this might be a possible upset for me against Vanderbilt. But right now I'm going to go uh, with Kentucky. I don't know why and nothing's showing up. Maybe that's a sign. You know what? I'm going to go with Penn State. Might as well go with an upset here. I'm going to go with Penn State upsetting Kentucky. Penn State is becoming one of the hottest – college basketball team so I got to go with the Nittany Lions have one of the best players in the nation on their team three seed UConn 14 seed Vermont I'm going to go with UConn I, got, I really like the Huskies I think that they're playing hot at the right time as well seven seed Michigan State 10 seed Auburn Auburn has just been too inconsistent for me so I'm going to go with Michigan State and then two seed Baylor versus Colgate I know that Colgate is always tough they're always a tough out but I'm going to go with Baylor 
Houston and Arkansas. This could be a potential upset as well, especially if Arkansas can start to pile up some wins. But Houston has just been one of the elite teams here so far. Duke, Kansas State, I'm going to go with the slight 5 over 4 upset and go with Duke. Penn State versus UConn, I'm going to continue on Penn State's run here. I think that Penn State could get the job done here. UConn has, you know, like there's always a team that UConn, you know, last year they got bounced by New Mexico State. So I think that Penn State, like I mentioned, they are playing hot at the right time. And then I'm going to go with another upset. I'm going to go with Michigan State defeating Baylor. Uh, Baylor is one of those teams that I like, uh, but they kind of have been inconsistent down the stretch. So I can't really trust them right now. Houston and Duke, I do have a lot of upsets in this uh, but I'm not going to pull it here. I'm going to go with the one seed, Houston. And then in the end, the, the Big Ten matchup, I'm going to go with the Spartans, go with Sparty to move on to the lead eight, but ultimately falling uh, to Houston. Uh, so, so far, I have two uh, number one seeds uh, in the final four. We'll see if we have one more uh, with Alabama being their region in the south. I have the Crimson Tide uh, moving on. I think that's southeast Missouri State. We'll win this matchup. Iowa and West Virginia in the nine over eight. I have the West Virginia Mountaineers beating Iowa. Iowa's just been a little bit too inconsistent for me. They've just been up and down. They've had like a good win against Indiana on road when they beat them by like 20 points. They have wins where I'm scratching my head, especially uh, yesterday uh, losing to Ohio State. TCU, VCU. VCU is a scary, scary team, but in the end, I really like the potential of TCU. Virginia and Iona, I have Virginia escaping Rick Patino's bunch. And then San Diego State, Mississippi State, I'm going to go for another upset here. I know that Mississippi State got a big victory yesterday against Florida. I think that their defense is going to create some chaos. And then the play of Tulu Smith is going to really vault them in to at least one win in March. Marquette, UC Irvine, I'm going to go with Marquette. And I'm going to go with Texas A&M. Texas A&M has been on fire, especially with the play of Wade Taylor and Tyrese Bradford. Got to go with the Aggies moving on. And I'm going to go with Purdue over Kennesaw State in the 2 and in the 15. So now we have our matchup set here. We have Alabama and West Virginia. I don't know why it's just showing an A, but we're going to go with Alabama over West Virginia. And then I'm going to go with the Horn Frogs of TCU pulling off a slight 5 over 4 upset over Virginia. And as much as I like Mississippi State here, I'm going to go with Marquette. Marquette has really played well. Shaka Smart has done a fantastic job with that program. So I'm going to go with Marquette. And then I'm going to go with another upset, Texas A&M pulling off the 7 over 2 over Purdue. And then I'm not going to stop there. I'm going to stay consistent. I'm going to go with TCU. TCU has been one of my favorite teams uh, to watch this season. Uh, They've been dealt with some injuries, but they are getting healthy when they need it most. I'm going to go with TCU. And I'm going to ultimately go with Marquette pulling off. Uh, not really an upset there, three and over the seven. And then we have TCU Marquette. I'm going to go actually with Marquette. Marquette is going to be one of my final four teams. So I have two one seeds and two three seeds as well. So kind of chalky, but that's just how uh, the bracket lined up for us. So we have Kansas, Gonzaga in our first final four matchup. I'm ultimately going to go with the Jayhawks. And then I'm also going to go in the Houston and Marquette game, going to go with the Houston Cougars. And like we did on Tuesday, Kansas and Houston, really my national championship hasn't changed. Just how the bracket really shaped up. I have the Houston Cougars. They've been so close every year, but this is their year. It's at Houston. They're going to have the home court. Give me a 